Hey guys, Tammy here. And today I'm going to talk about using court reporters. Now, I don't think I've ever talked about this at all, but this came up as a question from one of my clients today. And so I thought, hey, all right, let's do a video on that. Because if this client's got a question, I probably have other people out there that have questions about using court reporters, okay? Before I dive into my detailed explanation of this, let me just remind you, if you like my content, don't forget to hit like on this video and also subscribe so that you get notified as new videos are released. And as always, please share this on social media, whatever platform you're on. The more people we can help, the better. The first thing to know is that court reporters are not always automatic, okay? And I will stress that this varies in every jurisdiction and not just state to state. There are always varying procedures state to state, but this issue actually can even vary county to county and court to court. So whether you're in, you know, superior court, trial court, district court, appeals court, what whatever it is, it's, you know, there, it's always called different things in different places. We don't have a quote unquote district court by name in California. We do have districts, but it's just, it's named differently. Um, and so we usually just have superior court. Anyway, so my point is, is that there's all kinds of different courts, right? We can have court of appeals. We can have Supreme Courts in each state, all these different things. Okay. So the first thing that I would probably do is call the clerk's office at the whatever, if you're in family court, the family court clerk's office at the court and ask if there are court reporters at every hearing. Now, if you're in for trial or something like that, then you're, you know, they're going to, you, well, you, you still will have to arrange your own court reporter a lot of times, but usually for a trial, there will be a court reporter present. In motion, regular motion hearings, or in California, we call it an RFO, a lot of counties, they don't automatically have them. So many, many times you have to set up your own court reporter, regardless of the type of hearing that you're having. So the only way to find out if there's going to be a court reporter automatically is to ask the court, because I can't answer that question for you for every county in every state in the entire United States or internationally. I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. You have to call the court directly and ask, are there court reporters assigned to hearings? Now, the other time that we use court reporters is usually for a deposition. So if you have a deposition set, which if you don't know what that is, it's usually scheduled by the, usually you have attorneys if you have depositions, and usually one side will schedule to take the other side's deposition, which means that the attorney is going to ask the other party questions under penalty of perjury that that party then has to answer. And they will usually hire a private court reporter to come in and take shorthand, right, and record that deposition. Now, when you're talking about being in court, this can become really problematic because a lot of times if you want to appeal, a lot of times there are procedural rules on having to have a transcript of what transpired in order to do a valid appeal. Or sometimes if you want to do an appeal because you think something was messed up somewhere, you don't have a transcript, you don't have proof of what was said, you don't have proof of what the procedural issue might have been um, because you don't have that recorded via shorthand what happened, right? So it's like there's no record of what transpired. So how can you appeal something when you don't even have a record of it? And again, this very much varies state to state. It's a very complicated issue. Um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to appeal, definitely consult with a local attorney because um, this is, there's a lot of procedural rules that vary a lot depending on where, where you live, you know, what, what county, what state you're in and all that. But for the purposes of our discussion, let's just assume that, you know, you don't have a court reporter and you need to, to get one for a court hearing. Okay. What will usually happen is there is usually a court reporter's office at the court, but our court reporters here in California are actually not on staff. They're independent contractors. Now, a lot of courts do have people on staff, and California did at one point, 
But after COVID, and when they started with a lot of the reductions and things, um, you know, employment reductions and different things like that, they made everybody an independent contractor. So what happens here is that you have an independent contract um, court reporter. They come in and they do a recording of your hearing. You know, they do shorthand. That's what they're trained in. And then after the fact, if you want an actual transcript of what happened, you have to contact that court reporter. So in our case, I have to call the court. And what I have to do actually is I have to go into the court's record of the minutes from the hearing, okay? And it lists the court reporter's name on there. And then I have to call the court reporter's office and say, hey, can you give me the phone number for this particular court reporter? And then they'll put me in touch with that court reporter. Sometimes they'll have them call me or whatever their mechanism is, or they'll email them and have them email me or whatever. And then I say to that court reporter, hey, there was this hearing on such and such date at such and such time. Can you give me a transcript of it? And they're going to say, okay, let me, I'll get back to you with a quote. And then what they're going to do is they're going to follow up and say, okay, I found it. I have it. And here's how much it would be for me to transcribe that. And it's usually, you know, a few hundred bucks, depending on how long your hearing was. If you have a big multi-day trial or something, it's going to be a lot more than that. But for a typical motion hearing, usually we're looking at, you know, three to 500, maybe a thousand, depending on, you know, how long it went. Um, and a lot of times people are confused by that because it's like, really? Well, you recorded it at the hearing. You can't just give it to me. No, because they're taking it via shorthand. And then they keep all their records of that shorthand in their system. And then if you actually want it, want a transcription of it, in other words, a full typed out version, they go back to that shorthand file and then transcribe it all the way out. But it's not normally transcribed all the way out. It's just in shorthand. And here where our, in California, where our court reporters are independent contractors, all of that data is actually kept by the court reporter. So, you know, could I go back a year or two or three or whatever and get, have the court reporter type up a transcript of a case that they previously reported on? Possibly. I mean, it depends on, you know, how that person stored their data. Do they still have it? You know, it has, you know, God forbid something happened to that person and they passed away or something and are no longer available or, or whatever. Um, so here in, in California with us, that record lies with that court reporter, not anywhere with the court or in the court's file, okay? So procedurally, it can vary a lot. And so you have the expense of the court reporter showing up for your hearing. And, and again, that's usually anywhere from, you know, 500 to 1,000, depending on if it's half day, full day, or a couple hours, or it's only a couple hours, it might be 250 or something like that. But and I'm just kind of throwing out general pricing. And of course, I'm in California, so it may not be as expensive where you are, but they have to be paid to show up if the court doesn't provide them. And then beyond that, you have to pay for the transcript. Okay. And, and so you're, it, for some people, it kind of feels like having to pay twice for one service, but that's not the case. It's sort of like saying, okay, well, I'm going to turn this voice recorder on and I'm going to go into court. I'm going to turn the voice recorder on and it's going to play, but or it's going to record. But this is a very special voice recorder that is the only kind of voice recorder you can use in court. And so you're going to have to pay me to use my machine. Okay. And, and now, now, okay, I've got it recorded in this format, but now you want me to type up a whole written thing of everything that was said during that recording okay, well, now you're going to have to pay me additional time to do that. That's kind of what the process is for a court reporter. It's That's basically the concept. And so you have their cost for actually being present and recording it and, you know, via shorthand. And then you have a separate cost for the transcription. And both of those components can vary based on how long your hearing was, um, you know, and, and how much was involved in, in recording all the information. So I say all that because it's real important to know ahead of time, if, especially if you're self-represented, is this going to be 
um, a court reporter going to be provided automatically by the court or do I need to make sure somebody's in place? And if you have an attorney, an attorney takes care of all that for you, right? Although you will see that pop up on your bill. If your attorney has to hire, has to, you know, call and hire a court reporter to be present, then you got to pay that on your bill. That's a cost. Some firms do that automatically here in California. They just go, yep, every single hearing, we're going to have a person there and we're going to pay for it. And, you know, attorneys do that a lot of times because, again, for appeals and things like that, a lot of times there's procedural requirements and you've got to have a copy of the transcript and it can be helpful to have later on. Um, if you're on a very, very tight budget and you don't think anything is going to happen that's going to re- that you're ever going to do an appeal or if you say, look, appeals cost 10 plus thousand dollars. I'm never going to do an appeal because I can never afford that. So I don't want to pay the cost of a court reporter. You know, that's an important discussion to have with your attorney because that is can be an additional, you know, if you have multiple hearings, I mean, think about how many different court reporter um, fees you could have on that. Okay. If your court doesn't provide them again, if you have an attorney, that's a discussion you can have with your attorney and ask them if you don't call the clerk's office at the court and ask them if court reporters are always present and if not, you know, what's what's the criteria for when they are and when they aren't so that you have a clear understanding of that. I hope that little tidbit is helpful today. Um, If you'd like to learn more about my services, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page. You can book a time to speak to one of my staff and learn how I might be able to support you on your journey in this child custody arena. All right. See you guys next time.